In this video, you're going to build a utility notebook that will allow you to log and track schema changes across databases for better governance. And without further ado, let's dive in. So in this utility notebook, we're going to log and track schema changes. And that includes dropped columns, dropped tables, catalog, and also schema. And so we're going to perform this in a four-step process. And we're going to start by writing a SQL query that will allow you to retrieve the data. Then we're going to convert the SQL table into a pandas data frame. And then we're going to filter the data and prepare it using Streamlit widgets. And finally, we're going to take the data and then visualize and also explore the data. And so let's start with the retrieval of the data. And we're going to get it from the Snowflake account usage columns table. And that will allow you to see the dropped columns. So here are the columns that we are going to retrieve from the columns table view. And then we're going to use a filter to take it from the last 90 days. Let's run this a little bit. So you might see some data which was from a prior run. So we're going to retrieve it from scratch again. So here it is. We have the column names the table names, and then the corresponding ID for both the column, table ID, and also the schema ID. We have the table schema and then the table catalog. And then we have the deleted date. And the deleted date is for the columns. And aside from the columns that has been deleted, we also have data for table that has been deleted, schema that has been deleted, table catalog that has been deleted, and then we have the corresponding date for the deletion. And then here again, we're going to take the data from the table storage metrics view, and then we're going to get it from the last 90 days. Let's run the query here. And then, yeah, as already mentioned, the table name, the date at which it was dropped, the schema name, and then the date at which it was created. And then this is for the date at which the schema was dropped. You have the table catalog and also the date at which it was created and dropped. Let's proceed further. And here we have the dropped databases from the Snowflake account usage databases table view, and then also for the last 90 days. And so here is the data table. All right, and so we're gonna convert all of these SQL table into a pandas data frame. And so we're appending the two pandas method to it. Let's apply the function here. And now it's, con it's been converted into a pandas data frame with a assigned variable of pi columns. So we're adding pi in the prefix and it followed by the columns. And next we're gonna have pi tables. So the corresponding data frame for the tables that has been deleted. And then we're gonna run it. And then we're going to create a pi databases uh, data frame. There you go. All right. And so now the next step here is we're going to create some strongly widgets that will allow us to filter the data and prepare it for the subsequent data visualization. So let's do it. Let's run the code here. And firstly, we're going to create a variable called Snowflake Auction, and then we're going to use the select box widget. And the user will be able to select one of the following options, whether they want to look at the data corresponding to the column, table, schema, catalog, or database. And then we're going to add several conditions here where the selection of each of the options here will trigger the following. So if column was selected, then we're going to retrieve the data from the column. 
a SQL table and then create a DF variable. And then we're gonna use the deleted column name and then assign it to the date deleted variable. And then we're gonna use the column name here and then we're gonna assign it to the co name variable. However, if table was selected, then we're gonna use the corresponding name of the deletion date for the table and also the corresponding column name for the table name here. Sounds a bit confusing, right? But if you look at the code, you'll probably get what I mean here. And then we're gonna perform the same thing for the schema catalog and also the database name. Let's have a look. And we also have here, we're gonna write out the selection that you have made, and then we're gonna show the data frame. So here, the default option was column. So if we were to select table, then we're gonna see the table here, and then we're gonna see the corresponding data frame of the table. So if we select the schema, that's what we're gonna see. So let's go ahead and select column here. And then here, we're now gonna perform some data filtering, and then we're gonna create a variable called start date, and then we're gonna add a column called week, and then we're gonna group it by the week and column name in order to aggregate it some more. Let's run it. And so here we have data from the last 90 days, and so that corresponds to week number 37, 38, et cetera. which will be clear in the subsequent cells that you're gonna see here. So now we're gonna define what the week numbers correspond to, which means that we're gonna define the date range for each of the numbered weeks. So for example, week number 37 will correspond to September 9th until September 15. Week 38 corresponds to six, September 16 to September 22. And in the recent one, week 49, which is the current week. All right, so now we're gonna visualize the data as a heat map. Let's run the code here. We're gonna use pandas to read in the data, right? As already done before, we're gonna use Altair for the data visualization for creating the heat map. And then we're gonna use NumPy. All right, and so here is the column usage heat map by week, which is the X axis, and then the Y axis are the corresponding, I think it's table name, right? So if you scroll down, you'll be able to see all of the table names. No, actually the column names, right? Because we selected the option of column right here. So they are the column names. So the legend here tells us that the lighter the color, the more, the higher the value, right? And the darker the color, the lower the value. So each of here corresponds to the week, right? So we started from week 37 until week 49. So we get to see the time series here. And it, as you scroll down, you're gonna see some of the data columns were deleted recently, while some were deleted earlier on. And then some were deleted pretty much like um, constantly. Maybe there were some re reinvestigation of the uh, data and then it has to be deleted, All right? So it's interesting to see the deletion patterns here. So we're gonna see here that for large LM response, there's a lot of deletion up to 93 uh, in the 42nd week. Okay, so that is for the columns deletion data. Let's go ahead and select other. Let's select table. And then we're going to perform the filtering again. And then we're going to just run the code downstream again and create the heat map again. And now we have the table names and the corresponding deletion. Okay, so I, I think this has to be updated. Okay, here. I think we need to change this. 
I think it's Snowflake option, is it? So that it will be updated. The label will be updated as we select the different value for the select box widget. Let's scroll up again. There you go. So now it's updated to reflect the selection of the select box. So here we have the table usage heat map by week and table starting from the 4th of September, 2024. So these tables were deleted in the following weeks, as you can see here. Okay, so you see some uh, data table are deleted frequently, also in the same week of the 42nd week. Okay, and then you could do the same for the other two. No, actually three more, but we're just gonna do one more here and then you could try out the other um, on your own. And now we're gonna run the filtering again. So the cells that are downstream, we're gonna run it again. There you go. And here we have the database usage heat map. So feel free to adjust this number, which might make it a bit more uh, legible for you. Okay, so it just kind of at you know the 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 height for each of the rows here. And yeah, let me know in the comment section down below if this was helpful to you, and also let me know what other data apps that you'd like me to build. And so, as always, happy coding.